It's 5.30 here on the Truman State campus, and welcome to TMN Television on Thursday, April 21st. I'm Jasmine Adams. And I'm Matt Ragsdale. Tonight we look at the results of the Student Senate elections. Plus, stay tuned to see the changes the Panhellenic Council made to Greek Week next year. And don't forget to catch up on Truman Sports with Sarah Hicks on The Dog Pound. These stories and more tonight on TMN Television. You don't want to miss this. Music icon Prince has died. According to CNN, Prince was found unconscious in an elevator this morning. The musician was 57 years old and there is currently no cause of death. The singer-songwriter is one of the highest selling artists of all time, selling over a hundred million records. Tributes and condolences have been expressed online by many, including President Obama, Paul McCartney, U2, Justin Timberlake, and many more. The investigation regarding his death is ongoing. Yesterday, student government announced junior J.J. Durrell and junior Christy Krause won the student senate elections. Durrell will be the new student body president, while Krause will be serving beside him as vice president. According to Durrell and Krause's Facebook campaign page, their leadership will consist of enhancing the student experience, promoting health and wellness and safety, fostering inclusivity and diversity, uniting the campus community, and developing Truman's greater impact. To find out more about the student government, go to senate.truman.edu. Presidential candidate Donald Trump and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton won the New York primary Tuesday night. According to a CNN estimate, Trump has 847 delegates, while his rivals Texas Senator Ted Cruz has 50, 553 and Ohio Governor John Kasich has 148. A Republican candidate needs 1,237 delegates to get the nomination. Clinton is leading the Democratic race with 1,930 delegates, while her rival, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, has 1,223. A Democratic candidate needs 2,383 to get the nomination. The next primary is April 26th in Connecticut. Anti-slavery activist Harriet Tubman will appear on a new series of $20 bills. According to USA Today, this will be the first African American to appear on U.S. paper currency and the first woman in more than a century. Tubman will replace former President Andrew Jackson on the front of the bill, while Jackson will be incorporated into the existing image of the White House on the back. Tubman was previously planned to replace founding father Alexander Hamilton on the $10 bill, but the plan changed because of an unexpected amount of support for Hamilton. President Obama launched efforts to put a woman on currency in 2014 after he received a letter from a girl in Massachusetts about the lack of women on money. After the break, we'll take a look at Truman's first social justice leadership summit. But before that, let's take a look at this week's forecast. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. What if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. Last February, the Panhellenic Council revised its constitution to better match the National Panhellenic Council's constitution. The council will implement these changes during the 2016 fall formal recruitment. Changes include banning tackling new recruits on bid day when they run down the Red Barn Park Hill. Disaffiliation for Greek recruitment counselors will now start August 12th instead of August 1st. While counselors will still have to hide their social media accounts, they will not be asked to change their profile picture or name. Panhellenic President Junior Polly Massey 
says this change is an opportunity to start a new tradition that is less intimidating and more exciting for potential new members. These are the first changes to the Constitution since 2010. Issues regarding classism, body policing, and media representation were discussed at this year's Social Justice Summit. TMN reporter Amber Draper has the story. For the first time on Truman's campus, the Multicultural Affairs Center hosted a social justice leadership summit with the goal of bringing awareness to social injustices. With movements such as Black Lives Matter, Say Her Name, and the killings of transgender women in 2015, a majority of whom were African American, the theme of the summit is equality and justice now. Student coordinator Kristen Flynn says, if society fails to have conversations regarding events happening to minorities right now, negative outcomes could arise. Oppression could definitely get a lot worse, and it's better that we keep people informed about these things, even if they don't agree with them and don't see eye to eye. It's just better that, like, as Cody said, that they're informed. The summit was a two-day event, and on the first night, the documentary Out in the Night was shown. It follows the story of four black lesbians who fought for their innocence after facing charges for assaulting a man. One of the women featured in the film came to the summit to share her experience, and the director of the film also came to the event and gave reasons for creating the documentary. Assistant Dean of the Multicultural Affairs Center Carol Bennett says, at the college level, the Social Justice Summit is a great way for students to deal with differences among one another and discover our own biases. You may work for a transgender person. You may work for someone that is openly gay. Um, and you need to know some of the realities of their life and not just what media or social media is saying. A half dozen schools from the Midwest participated in the event, and Bennett says she hopes there will be an increase of Truman attendees next year and that the participants this year would reach out to others and share the benefits of the program. We're hoping that those individuals from the schools that participated will go back and tell other students and the faculty that came will tell their colleagues uh, about the opportunities that we provided. For more information about events happening next year sponsored by the Multicultural Affairs Center, visit mac.truman.edu. For the Truman Media Network, I'm Amber Draper. Truman's students and organizations found a special way to send off University President Troy Pano before he leaves Truman State University. TMN reporter Charles Mahood has the story. Truman students celebrated the upcoming departure of President Troy Pano on Wednesday at the Seb Down Under with an event called A Great Day to Be a Bulldog. The event held was a send-off for President Pano and an end-of-the-year festival. The Office of Advancement wanted as many organizations as possible to run booths or provide entertainment on stage. Nikki Batanik, Public Relations Chair of the Student Philanthropy Council, says numerous organizations wanted to be involved. Pretty much everyone. Um, that's kind of our goal. We have leaders from student government, SPC, WRC, um, SAB. And the event, we're going to have multiple organizations are going to have booths out. Um, so they'll also be very much part of the event. So, everyone. The event was not just for Truman students to say goodbye to President Pano, but to raise money for the Troy and Kelly Pano Emergency Student Relief Fund. The fund sends out to help students who cannot afford tuition due to a crisis or emergency. And so basically, if a student for some reason cannot financially come back to the university, um, you know, maybe their parents got laid off or something, they could apply to the fund and that fund would cover their expenses to keep them at Truman. While there's not a goal for the fund, if 1,000 Truman students donate $1 or more, a couple of alumni will add $10,000 to the fund. Despite this, the Office of Advancement says the community involvement is more important than the amount of money that is raised. In terms of our goals for the student giving, we're really hoping just to have a lot of students show their support for it. So if 1,000 students gave $1 a piece and we only raised $1,000 from the student side, that would still be a great demonstration that the university community appreciated what Troy and Kelly Payne have done while they were here at Truman. For more information on the fund and alternate ways to donate, visit the website paynoproud.truman.edu or visit the Office of Advancement. For Truman Media Network, this is Charles Mahood. Stay tuned to learn how an organization is growing organic food for local businesses. We'll be right back. All right, you ready for some baseball trivia? Let's do it. What year produced the most no-hit games in the big leagues? Seven no-hitters in 1990. Wow, that's right. Now a question that's not trivial. How many children will witness bullying this year? Huh. 
The answer, three out of four, 75%. That's wow. right. How many of them will say something? Kids want to help, but don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. With the sweet burn of moonshine, moonshine on a burger, it's not illegal, but it tastes like it. Introducing the Midnight Moonshine Thick Burger with moonshine glaze on 100% Black Angus beef, only at Hardee's. Truman's Community Garden Club is focusing on helping the local community. Contributing reporter Corbin Cotman has the story. The Truman State Community Gardening Club is hard at work planting and transplanting the early seeds for their next crop. The club works with students to build awareness towards sustainability and the importance of eating healthy, locally grown produce. Club member Thomas Pfizer says growing your own food is an important skill that many overlook. Really it's a very novel uh, idea to be able to grow your own food and I think that's something that, um, you know, a lot of people find deep satisfaction out of and I encourage anybody who wants to uh, be a part of this miracle of life to get out and grow some food with us. As of now, the club is looking to obtain funding to encourage students to work with the garden over the summer. The Take Roots Cafe, a pay what you can organization, will potentially utilize some of the club's produce such as tomatoes, lettuce and other basic greens if the club's yield is large enough. I believe the goal for this um, growing season would be to take very close notes of exactly how much we can produce and then come back and request some kind of financial support for students, some kind of financial incentive for students to stay with Garden Club over the summer. Students interested in working with the Community Garden over the summer can contact Thomas about potential opportunities. With Truman Media Network, I'm Corbin Cotman. One capstone class is creating some tasty treats for the Kirksville community. TMN reporter Emily Wickmer has the story. It's not your average class project. Five students are making homemade cheese balls as part of their senior capstone project. Students in the agricultural science capstone class were given $100 to invest in their project. The profits of the class will then be put back into the fund for next year's students. Capstone professor Michael Seipel says the Capstone Project gives students hands-on experience in taking their agricultural knowledge to the next level. It can give, can give them some production-related skills or management-related skills. Um, well, take cheese making, for example. It you know, seem, may seem like a simple process. There's a lot of art and science to it. The Northeast Missouri cheesemakers meet once a week to make their deep-fried cheese balls. Team members say it was a learning experience for the team. When they first started their cheese endeavor, none of them knew how to make cheese. But after research, trial and error, they are now cheesemaking pros. Senior Matt Lineman says the secret to a good cheese ball is to let it refrigerate before frying. Well, at first we have to we kept like we doing a bunch of research and seeing what uh, recipe we liked best, and then now we just kind of like have it memorized. So we don't have to like keep looking things up. The cheesemakers have met almost every week since the start of the spring semester, and have made over 800 balls of fried cheese. If you want to try their deep fried cheese balls, you better move fast. They are available for the next few weeks and can be ordered on the Nemo Cheese Co. Facebook page. Cheese balls are $5 and come in a frozen pack of 10. For the Truman Media Network, I'm Emily Wickmer. In this episode of The Dog Pound, Sarah Hicks talks about the Bolts rugby team and how it is preparing for its last season game against the University of Missouri. Bullets rugby team is mostly made up of younger players, but the women are competing well during the fall and spring seasons. Focusing on recruitment, the women have a larger team this semester than last year at this time. Last semester we ended up getting about 11 rookies, so we had a mostly new team. It was, I think we had six people returning out of a, a new field 15 at a time, so two-thirds of our team were new. Even though the players are young, 
The team has impacted each member, and many teammates say the hard work brings each individual together. I got a whole family, which was really cool. Not something I really expected because I hung out with the team a lot already, but I never expected like our relationship to change. But like being on the team and being a group here are totally different, and being on the team is so much more rewarding. <laughs> The bond between teammates showed during their game last weekend against Benedictine. The Bullets are using this game as momentum to perform well against Mizzou this Saturday. And our last game was way better than what we have been doing and it all has clicked and everybody understands and we've been doing really, really well this season. Playing Mizzou was one of their most anticipated games of the season. The team is optimistic because they have been preparing all week with conditioning and tackling practice. This is a tough team to beat, but we are also a tough team to beat, and so we're just really emphasizing our strengths, um, highlighting those and working on our weaknesses, bring those up to speed. After the semester is over, the team will start to focus on recruitment again and start summer workouts. Next year, they are welcoming new players and is excited to see the foundation from this semester flourish. Thanks for tuning in this week. This is my last time hosting the Dog Pound, so thank you so much to everyone who has tuned in for the past year. As always, I am Sarah Hicks reporting for the Truman Media Network, and this has been the Dog Pound. That brings us to the end of our program. Be sure to check out our exclusive web content on tmn.truman.edu. For weekend updates and special coverage, look for TMN Television on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And don't forget to check out the latest episode of Rising From Our Roots on YouTube. And for complete multimedia coverage, be sure to pick up a copy of the Index and tune into KTRM on 88.7 The Edge. From all of us at TMN Television, thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of the week.